Question number six, Grant Robertson. Oh, question number Mr. seven. Grant Thank Robertson. you very much, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Justice. On what date was the decision taken to delay the introduction of legislation to implement phase two of the anti-money laundering legislation? And what are the specific compliance costs that average mums and dads will face as a result of the implementation of that legislation? The Honourable Mr. Speaker, Amy Adams. Keen to answer. Mr. Speaker, there has been no formal decision to delay the introduction of the bill. A decision was made on the 25th of October to put out an exposure draft, which means that introduction is now likely to occur next year. As I told the member yesterday, this has not delayed our target date for the legislation to be enacted, which is by far the more relevant date. In answer to the second part of the member's question, the compliance costs involved in net present value terms have been assessed as being up to $1.6 billion over 10 years. Supplementary question, Mr Speaker. Supplementary question, Grant Robertson. Can she confirm the official advice that she has received that of the $1.6 billion of criminal funds being laundered in New Zealand, 56% involved the purchase of real estate and 26% involved the work of accountants and lawyers, the three groups that are the focus of phase two of the reforms. Mr. Oh, the Honourable Amy Adams. Well, with the information in front of me in the House, no, I can't, but that could well be right. We certainly know that lawyers, accountants and real estate agents are the sectors identified by the Financial Action Task Force and our own financial intelligence units as being sectors to be covered, which is why we have committed to them being covered in phase two of the reforms. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. Point of order, Grant Robertson. Um, I seek leave of the House to table a Ministry of Justice briefing note uh, from uh, July 2015, um, entitled Phase Two of the Anti Money Laundering and Counterfeiting the Financing of Terrorism Reforms, which has those figures I had in mind. Leave us to table that particular document. Is there any objection? There is none at Kevin Table. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Grant Robertson. Why did she reject the advice of officials in June 2015 to immediately begin policy work on implementing phase two of the reforms? The Mr. Honourable Speaker. Amy Adams. Well, actually, Mr Speaker, in July of 2015, I announced that we were starting the initial scoping work of the reforms, and the advice of officials actually had us on a time frame of the legislation being enacted late 2018. We are now committed to having it in place significantly before that. True. Supplementary question, Grant Robertson. Why, three years after phase one was brought into force, two years after the government was warned by President Xi of corrupt money from China entering New Zealand, and a year after her officials asked her to begin work immediately, is she still standing by allowing billions of dollars of corrupt money to come into New Zealand? That's right. Mr. The Speaker. Honourable Amy well, Adams. Far from standing by, actually, this government is getting What's on changed? with ensuring the regime is in place as fast as possible and actually faster than officials recommended. But I reiterate, Mr. Speaker, that $1.6 billion of compliance costs over 10 years is significant, and the fact that this government cares about things like compliance costs and their impact on government is why we are the number one country in the world for ease of doing business, and a big part of the reason why unemployment has now dropped to 4.9%. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Grant Robertson. Isn't the real threat to mums and dads that hundreds of millions of dollars of criminal funds are being laundered in New Zealand through the real estate market that's leading to massive house price increases and locking first home buyers out of the housing market? Order, the Honourable Amy Adams. Mr Speaker, the member is blithely ignoring the fact that we already have the entire financial sector which, through which almost all real estate agents' transactions go through covered. And I think that if you asked ordinary New Zealanders whether they were worried about $1.6 billion of compliance costs landing on them, they would be very concerned and they would want the government to proceed carefully. Question number eight, 